What's up, everyone? Welcome to the What's Your Five podcast, episode 17. Yes, we are graduating from high school. Uh, my name is Rodell, and with me tonight is always my good friend and gaming host, Mr. Joel Ferrer. How are you doing, sir? Doing great, man. I'm 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 digging the so unplanned, but I'm digging the shirt. Digging ah, the shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Digging digging your sweater. Digging your sweater. If you guys don't know, if you guys are just listening, uh, we are both wearing the uh 2020 uh champions of the NBA uh Lakers. So uh soon to be fun. um repeat back to back. Soon, yeah, but we're soon to be repeat back to back. We got we got Marcus Soul, it's always nice. Mm-hmm. And uh we you know we lost Dwight and we lost Rondo, but it's all right. Um our topic this week is going to be a pretty good one. I'm actually pretty excited about this one is we are going to go over the top five gaming innovations. So we did an episode, uh, episode four, I believe, with uh, Mark Julio, where we did game. Uh, it was industry game industry breaking games. Well, this time around, we're going to do actually uh, technology. We're going to give it, you know, big ups to the hardware or software. Uh, but for the most part, I think, you know, it's going to be something on the lines of that. So, you know, our tech game enthusiasts, like our IT folks, like myself and Joel, uh, you know, are going to be pretty excited about this. Um, you know, I it took me a little bit to come up with this, Joel. But did you this one was this, yeah, this one was tough. I, I went like I think this one I definitely didn't have my end. My end list is way different from my start list. Mm-hmm. My start list had we'll see when we go into the list. We had a totally different point of view. Gotcha. So, this one was it was interesting. Yeah, for sure. And uh, you know, before we get into it, we do. But first, I do like to thank everybody to uh, for everybody that was uh, entered or that entered our Final Fantasy November giveaway. And uh, you know, we're gonna congratulate one of the winners on our social media platforms on Twitter, on Instagram. So be on the lookout for that when uh, the, that name drops. We'll go ahead and give them an at. We'll make sure to uh, reach out to them, and uh, they'll tell us what their uh, Final Fantasy game list is going to be that they'll win their five games on. So congratulations to them as soon as they receive it. Um, this is uh, the month of December. We're starting off, which is really cool because we're actually going to be doing a really big giveaway this time. And I think this time around, we're actually going to go ahead and instead of using our uh, normal method, which is the uh, you know the link, the you know King Sumo uh, deal giveaway uh, situation, we're actually going to go ahead and do a little bit more focused deal, right? We're going to actually going to do uh, YouTube comments. We want to make sure that you have to like and subscribe to videos on YouTube at what's your underscore five. Uh, leave a comment down below, you know, for this video, as well as the rest of the videos that are upcoming this uh, this month, as we are going to be doing a lot of different giveaways this month. So, uh, you know, we want to get more interaction with our fans. Want to make sure that you guys are, you know, listening intently or watching our beautiful faces and, uh, you know, participate. You know, let us know what you guys think. Let us know what your five, you know, innovations were or what your five games of 2000 2009 were i mean you know we love to hear all the feedback and if you guys aren't following us on social media you guys can follow us on twitter on instagram and on tiktok at what's your underscore five if you have any suggestions to uh for any of our topics or if you want to be on the show email us at topics at what's your five dot com so with that out of the way let's just go ahead and i want to say first thing before we get into this I wanted to ask you, Joel. We were we were chatting uh, this morning about uh, the Netflix show, uh, The Queen's Gambit. Did mm-hmm. you end up watching any more episodes? I have not. I where, where did I get to? She um, she just collapsed from o- ODing on painkillers. Oh yeah, I think that was end of episode three. End, three, end of episode I think three. It was episode or two. two or yeah, episode two or three. One of those. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's uh man. Uh, if you guys haven't watched uh, The Queen's Gambit yet, you guys should. It's it, really great. It makes me really want to learn chess, um, <laughs> but I, I'm not gonna like take it for granted. I know it's a big dedication. Like you have, you have to sink some time in to, to learn chess. It's you do. You know. I mean, me personally, I think I you know I, I mentioned this to a lot of my friends when I tell them I tell them about Queen's Gambit. It there's a lot of um, fighting game meta to it, right? So there's a lot of you know different uh, viewpoints as far this opening as, means respond oh, with this, this opening. Yeah, opening yeah. yeah you know you know in predictability and all this other stuff it's just all crazy you know mind games at that point and uh i think that's why my wife and i really dug it because she loves the art piece of it um and, and the fact that too that the uh the main character uh, is really pretty like she's gorgeous like her face is just gorgeous um 
I think that, you know, between that and all like the meta and all the competitive, ga- you know, competitive that she had mm-hmm. the, the drive that she has, I think that's what really uh, got me going. So I, th- I think they actually, you know, it's 2020, but I think they're, they're, they're finally getting good at making a strong female character that's not like outwardly being like a like bitchy for just to be tough right right she's, she's a strong independent character that mm-hmm. can just be strong and independent doesn't have to be you know lightning from final fantasy 13 <laughs> <laughs> yeah or uh who is it um female oh, squall pretty much. female squall no who's uh who's the the main character in horizon oh what's her name uh Al- Al- a- a- Aloy. Aloy. yeah Aloy. Aloy's pretty good like i think as you play more she 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 sheds that uh uh you guys outcast me i'm I'm gonna spite all you guys yeah <laughs> no i i think i think you know you're right in the sense that i love the fact that uh you know uh oh gosh i'm, I'm totally blanking on her name now um beth Harmon, the, the mm-hmm, main character mm-hmm. uh she uh is very pretty in the face but she's not like super voluptuous or she's not like she's very they don't sexualize awkward. her too much no they don't yeah. and it's a very you know kind of just is it was done very well if you guys haven't watched it please watch it you know give us some type of comment as to whether or not you guys watch it or not uh i'm actually playing uh chess on you know my iphone with a buddy of mine he watched it too he he, he mentioned that it was kind of anime ish i always thought that was kind of cool it is kind of anime oh I, I i can see i can see that yeah yeah so um i totally tangent sorry i just want to talk about it because I, I think it was just a really great uh great show um all right so Let's just get into it. Uh, top five gaming innovations. Uh, my top five really came down to uh, what was it? Convenience, uh, cool factor, and you know, uh, you know, ease of uh, the, the ease of gaming. <laughs> I, I, th- I think that's that's the word, right? Like quality mm-hmm. of life. That's 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 the word I'm looking for. Quality of life. Uh, do you have any criteria based on on that on your on your list this time around yeah my list is super interesting like um a lot of these things i don't i don't personally do mm-hmm. but a lot of the things i chose i i feel like really kind of pushed gaming to where it is now where it's when, when, when we were you know in elementary school and middle school when you, you were know, in elementary school <laughs> i was, was in junior elementary high. school and middle school it was like you know gaming is a type of person right right it's like oh oh they're a gamer mm. and now it's like what what fifteen year old doesn't play video games at, to some degree? Oh, that's tough. <laughs> so, so the, my list kind of like push is what I, I think anyway. Transform gaming into what it is now. Push it into the mainstream mm-hmm. and um, kind of create a genres, things like that. Oh. Um, but I, I'm curious to see if any of our items cross. It'll be it'll be fun. It'll be interesting. So I guess all right. So you know what? Let's just get into it because I'm I'm kind of curious on how you how you approach this. So um you know disclaimer guys we don't ever talk about our list offline like at all like, we never do is, we never do because you know we just make a silly show after that so let's just go ahead and get into it we're gonna go ahead t- uh top five gaming innovations my number five i'm gonna start it off so uh one of the things that i feel is again a quality of life issue that i don't feel anybody my son you know who's four now but uh will never experience this um is uh he'll never experience the fact that you had to leave your system on the entire time because you didn't want to turn off your, your system. Right. And lose all your progress in the game. Right. Like if you're, if you're playing any game, like it, you know, within, you know, mid eighties, all the way up to night, like mid nineties, like maybe 96, 97. Uh, I mean, there were games that had battery saves, but really uh, the, the innovation I'm talking about is the memory card. Right. Uh, memory card really uh solidified something you know to everybody which is you know you can save your progress and any you know at given certain points depending on what game it is right whether it's rpg you have a save point there or you have you know different uh save points for you know different in platforms levels or, mm-hmm. levels or even you know my you know one of my one of the things i always remembered was uh, uh as trivial as it is uh save uh save all of your button configurations for fighting games right hey, so like that's yeah, it's convenient, one, man. man. Yeah, because yeah, you know you want to boot up the game, you want to play versus, and you just want to go. Like you don't want to have to keep changing your buttons every single time. It's a pain in the butt. So um, that was one of my you know things I thought was like, wow, man. Like you have these memory cards now. I mean, again, you did have battery saves back then for just like RPGs, but 
batteries die, man. And then all mm-hmm. that save data, all that level 99 grinding you did in Final Fantasy VI, gone. Can't do it anymore. So, or you had the the, the paper the paper full of the different codes and, and like yep. in action games to just get to where you were. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this dot here, this dot here, this dot here. What was it oh. Aladdin? Like uh, you know, bug and um, <laughs> Apple and, and Abu's <laughs> <Yeah>. face. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. Genie face, uh, Abu, and then uh, yeah, that gets you to the first level. Damn it. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, and then the other part of it too was the whole. Uh, and like I said, writing down stuff. It's just so quality of life. Memory cards were definitely something that I feel really kind of just broke the stigma of just having your, you know, again, like you don't ever have to lose your progress anymore. And even now, you know, they have cloud saves and all the other mm-hmm. stuff. I mean, the memory card was really kind of one of those things where it's like you had different games that had different saves and all that. And I just thought it was just amazing that how that came about. I, Thinking, thinking back when you were first, when you were first mentioned memory cards, mm-hmm. I remember when I was a little kid, like I was a real little kid when I played NES, and I was still, you know, five or six when I started playing the SNES. Mm-hmm. So I remember all these tricks. Like I would first, of course, I'll leave the system on and, and the TV, and I'll get in huge trouble. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute, I can turn off the TV, and no <laughs> one. Will know. I started turning off the TV, right, and I was still getting in trouble. And then I was like, oh, I'll put something over the light so the light, the red light, won't show. <laughs> And no one will know this thing is on. So I, I had to like develop all these tricks. And back then, my parents were like, you know, you could say they were green, I guess. Turn off the power strip when you're done using your thing. Mm-hmm. So I had to like cover that so the light's not on there. So <laughs> I learned all these tricks, man, to, to hide the fact that my system's still on. It's so funny because, like, my parents, I mean, I wouldn't say they didn't care. But, I mean, like, mm-hmm. I guess my parents were... You know, my dad was retired at the time and my mom worked graveyard. So they were never, I mean, I wouldn't say they were around, but they weren't really around. That makes sense. And so, like, it didn't matter if we turned it on or off. However, I did have a little brother that liked to play with the games all the time. So, I mean, like, if I left it on and he saw it on, game over, man. Like, you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. So, Fun fact, the first time I remember doing this mm. was the first time I beat the damn level in, in TMNT. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, well, you talk, talking about the, 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 the water level, like the water the, level with the bombs. The bombs, yeah. I beat it. Got called for dinner, and I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> and I was like, I'll just leave it on, go eat dinner. And I came back, I was like, huh? Hmm, I can leave it on, and no one knows. It. Yeah, no <laughs> one would playing. ever know. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first time I remember doing having to do that. Oh, it's too funny, man. I had to de- and you still haven't beat that game, have you? <laughs> no, I the, the next level where you use the turtle van. Yeah, I only had like one turtle left because I got I got raped in the in the damn level. So <laughs> I, I, that that's the one episode that I will never I'll, I'll never not watch a new uh, GDQ of of uh, NES TMNT. Oh God, I love GDQ. Man. I don't care what anybody says. I know how cringy it can get, but damn, it is so good when you see all these games uh, speed run, man. So. Um, all right, number five, Joel. What do you got, man? What 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 is your first gaming innovation that you can think of? This is, the, the funny thing, and we're 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 not that different in age, Riddell, but I think right. we're we're generation separated yes. in terms of gaming. Mm-hmm. Uh, my number five is, is expandable storage. Mm. So a, a fairly recent development, not not super recent, maybe in the past ten, you know, ten twelve years. Mm-hmm. Um, but to me, this was like the first time a console was like, "Hey, let's take that PC thing that they do and up, and you can self upgrade, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and let's introduce that here." And if I remember correctly, um, the first one was probably was like, uh, I, don't, I don't quite remember if they did it on the PS3, but like the PSP, you could say, "Oh, insert memory card." Yes, and you can put more games. You can download right. games. You can you can um, have more more save files and, and all that kind of stuff. And all of a sudden, like you know, with the age of um, let's call them backups. <laughs> your, your PSP or your PSV or your 3DS, right? You don't carry a whole wall of cartridges, man. You just have the system. You just have the system, and you remember you 50 games set. on there, and and you got a whole library of games. You know, especially with emulation. Yes. Um, and then obviously it went into consoles, and mm-hmm. and now it's like, oh, I don't need four DVDs of Call of Duty to to play it. I just have one, and then I download the rest. I yeah. save it locally. That's um, true have a whole library game. So I, I, I think, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a convenience that kind of like what you're mentioning, your, your son will never know right. having to leave his console on. Right. Um, you know, my son will never know, you know, having to only have physical discs. You put it, you, know, you have to put the disc in each time you play. Like, no, <laughs> no, I, 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 I bought it. I save it online. You know, yeah. it's all digital, it's all digital library. Now to, to, to combat that, right? Like, like I said, <laughs> I'm very old 
in that respect, right? Like <laughs> I need I need something tangible, right? A lot of digital games that I own, you know, was purely on the basis of of sales. So it's like sure. I I do I I I like the idea of digital, you know, digital libraries, but I need that physical disc. I mean, if you take a look in the back, right? Like I can listen to Cowboy Bebop's album online, no problem. I can go on YouTube, mm -hmm. I can listen to it, no problem. But having the tangible disc, having the tangible vinyl and being able to play it is something that you you just you grow into like i think that's a, that's a generational thing i mean i'm not a you know i'm not from the 50s or anything like that where that's all it's all we listen to guys it's all vinyl like you know audiophile garbage no it's not about that it's about having the actual physical tangibility of, of it but um to your point though with the expandable storage i mean there were so many different opportunities i mean mm -hmm. I, you said you're right right so if it was uh it was ps3 that had the expandable storage where you can upgrade the hard drive now granted yep. on ps2 so un unsupported upgrade right. Right? <laughs> Un unsupported upgrade, but on ps2 you couldn't upgrade the hard drive like mm -hmm. it was formatted in a specific way you know and you couldn't do anything after the fact you couldn't load any games on there until you you know hacked it like hacked it hacked xbox it. as well you know xbox had their kind of hack yep. thing where you could you could have a hard drive in there too well, no, there was a hard drive in there, but you can upgrade it. But you can upgrade, was, yeah, you had the yeah. whole, you, had the whole uh, you know, what is it, uh, mod chip and all that. I, mm -hmm. you know, we can, I can go into a whole, you know, what we, what okay. I like to call back, yeah. in the, the underground economy. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll keep it to a supported expandable storage, <laughs> right? You know, I don't want, I don't want people to get back to me and be like, hey, man, you sold me, you know, you sold me this. I'm like, no, I didn't. <laughs> like, um, uh, no, good, good, uh, good topic or good list or good uh, choice because you know, again, expandable storage is something that. I, I take it for granted like you know it's right. just like oh you know with 32 gigs oh, i'll just put 120 gigs no problem but back then you couldn't do that at all it was like you either had 32 gigs and that's it, <laughs> like, that's it. Yep. you know like you, i mean right now you know even with the ps5 right now you have 887 gigs on your system to download games and some games like call of duty for example 237 gigs like oh man like, dude, would would the switch even be viable without X, without an sd card i don't think it's a viable system without an sd card it's not i'm not carrying around all those cartridges man dude i got like a huge like case of cartridges <laughs> man and just because i just have them i think a lot of them right. are Mega Man games but i don't know um cool all right so uh that's your number five number four so mm, let's see number four uh is something that we've talked about on the show uh with uh, again with the uh with our guest host uh, mark uh mark julio uh, and he talked about uh, Super Mario 64. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that was truly innovative at the time, and I think is still innovative at the time, uh, and then I think uh, Sony kind of copied onto that after the 64 was released, was the uh, analog controller. So uh, that's my number uh, number four, is the, is the analog controller stick, right? At first, I thought when we, you know, being a fighting game player and all that stuff, D-pad was all, you know, I'll do it all mm -hmm. day, right? Uh, I never really understood why you needed an analog controller. Like I always thought like, you know, digital's best, right? It's just, you know, one press, that's it. Uh, you know, not realizing later on as I grew up, it's like, oh, you get more precise control if you just yeah. tap it just a little bit or if you go up or you go left, you know, and you're, you're walking, right? Like you're not, you know, you're not just running all the time, you know, <laughs> but um, but yeah, it's uh, the analog, uh, the analog controller, I think was really uh, fascinating at the time I and mean, even though it was kind of a pain in the butt to use at first because you don't know like you just, all you had was this d-pad all you knew was just a big cross right well, it, it, it didn't had. help that the controller was like you know the, the first <laughs> analog controller was like your, your knuckles are almost touching oh my god man that that dude the n64 controller man i don't know what people were i don't know what nintendo was thinking i mean i know they i mean then you look at the GameCube controller after that, and you're just like, "What the hell is this thing? How did how did Nintendo's EHS department not like fly <laughs> the game testers for getting carpal tunnel for using right? that controller? Man, these people at EHS, man, I don't think EHS was even invented at the time, man. I think each, you know, for those of you who don't know, it's a what was it environmental health and safety? That's yeah, what it is, right? Yeah, it's, it's like, like um on the job safety kind of stuff. Yeah, so they do basically all the uh, ergonomics, right? So it's like whoever. You know, QA past the controller with this crazy looking boomerang, you know, schlong looking thing in your hand. You're just kind of like, what is this? Well, the, the thing that killed me about the controller is to use the D pad, you actually have to lift your hand and move it to another section of the controller. Yeah. It's like, well, that was the thing. It was like you either held it like this or you held it like this. Like it yep. was like one of the two. 
which looks very phallic when you see this on video. But like, it's like I just and, and, and like 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 this, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we do have the the e everyone on podcast. So. I think I think it's I think it's safe. <laughs> like something like that. We're not cursing. I mean, that's fine, right? Oh um, yeah. So I, I think the analog controller again. You know. Things that I think I think this is starting to come more of a list of things you take for granted that yeah, you don't no. realize that, that you don't realize that wow had this not been available X Y and Z so yeah analog controller is uh, definitely up there for my hey you know you should appreciate the fact that this is invented <laughs> so yeah I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna get a lot of a lot of flack on this being as I was as I still consider myself you know a a PC gamer at times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. One of the reasons why sometimes the controller is superior to the keyboard mouse. Mm, WASD yeah. does not have sensitivity. It's all or nothing. It's run, it's all, run. Yeah, it's all walk. one. Yep. It's or um. You so, hold shift and you can walk, but I don't know. Yeah, I, I or hold I, control I, or you know. As I get older, I'm like, oh my pinky, I can't reach that control <laughs> button anymore. <laughs> yeah, but like, um, oh, man, I'm getting cramps. <laughs> I, I know some people like, like they'll play um action games with keyboard mouse and then switch to controller for driving. Mm -hmm. I, I totally get it. It makes sense. Yeah, I mean, there's just there's more precision to it, man. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean like I don't care what anybody says. Everybody say keyboard and mouse, man, all day. For some games, yes, like you know, uh, I'll play Street Fighter on a joystick any day of the week. You know, I'll like I said, that's that's my that's my weapon of choice. Uh, I'm not saying that WASD is the worst thing in the world. <laughs> all I'm saying is, can that, you do a charge attack with WASD? Heck, dude. So there's <laughs> controllers. All right, let's get into this. There's controllers called hitboxes where mm -hmm. you know it's basically WASD and there's a jump button on the bottom, and you can totally do charge moves. Absolutely. In fact, they actually had to. They ended up building a, a, a what they call a, a SOCD cleaner, where it cleans up the okay. inputs. So let's just say, for example, if you're holding back. And then you press forward, and then you you know you press punch. You do a sonic mm -hmm. boom. What that does is uh, it negates the control from the back, so you can't just keep throwing sonic booms all day or keep holding the I punch see. all day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah, they do. Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, with, with the traditional D pad, you only have one finger, right? You're not, exactly. So yeah. you you know you can't you know it'd be it'd be humanly it it's humanly impossible to keep throwing sonic booms back and forth, back and forth, back. And forth. Dude, I'm I'm literally growing a blister thinking of sonic booms <laughs> yeah. with the D pad. I'm. <laughs> oh man, it, it hurt, man. I, and I'll, I won't do charge characters. I mean, I'll do charge characters on my joystick. I won't do. Oh, that. definitely all day. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So number four, Joel, what do you have, sir? So number four, it's it, it's a gaming innovation. Um, but number four for me is going to be console multimedia. Console multimedia. Can you ex can you explain? What yes, console I, multimedia I'll expand is? on this. So Please. this started with the PS One. Okay. You could play CDs. No one really did it, right? Because you have a CD player. Not a big deal, but right. hey, that's kind of cool. And then um, they came out with the PS2, sold it for $300. Yes. But you got a DVD player. That's right. That's and right. That it was, was my, my only DVD player. And my whole family had to watch the DVDs in the living room because they're, you know, they're non-console peasants. And I got to watch them in my room because I, I had a DVD player. So you got to watch uh, all you got to watch all your bomba and on DVD. <laughs> I got to watch the Matrix, my favorite deep, my first and favorite DVD in my room. <laughs> you know, watching Neo do the, the the zero gravity stuff. Yes. And then obviously the PS3 had had Blu-ray and that's right. I never I never owned a Blu-ray player. I've never owned a Blu-ray player. The PS3 was my Blu-ray player. Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. but this all, all of a sudden, right, you have this well, what's seen as a, as a toy to some people. Yep. And at first, you know, it was a little more uh, reasonable, I guess, in the in the older systems. Yep. And now they're charging three three fifty for these toys. Yep. But they can now be centers to your living room multimedia. Yeah. Especially Absolutely. you know nowadays, obviously streaming is a big thing. Mm -hmm. If you're a college student or if you're just you don't like clutter, you only want one device. Mm -hmm. The PS Five or Xbox can be your Netflix, your Hulu, your YouTube, you can be everything. You buy a nice multi controller. You have a keyboard to type in your searches, and it's your one stop shop. It's um, true. While, while this isn't like, like um, gaming oriented, mm. I really think, especially right. So when you talk about console boards, it's really Sony versus Microsoft, right? Nintendo's uh, kind of doing their own thing. They're, they're never going to really lose ground or, or gain ground on the Sony Microsoft fanboys, right? I think this is why Sony had the edge last last gen and got all those exclusives. Mm. Was because Sony people had a PS3, not because it was a superior game platform. Mm. You play damn Blu-rays. Yeah. They had PS2s because they could play damn DVDs. That's true. And they could justify the cost to like their parents because like, uh, 
you know, we'll play DVDs too. Yeah, uh, it's okay. You can leave it there. You can play your DVD in the living room. Yeah, put in the living room. And so I think it it really it, it, it turned it from a toy to being possibly the center of your multimedia center. Um, and it sold consoles. I, yeah. I think at the time, uh, the the it was either the PS2 or the PS3 was cheaper than mm-hmm. the respective player. Right. So it's like it's cheaper and you play games. Right. It, and it wasn't the nonsense. I think there was like a um, was there wasn't there like a NES VHS console or something like that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There's like but, yeah, there's NES yeah the NES VHS thing. I mean, there were so many different um, crazy contraptions. If you mm-hmm. guys ever decide to look it up, look up Gaming Historian on YouTube. He's amazing, non-sponsored. Um, he uh, he's amazing at you know finding all these crazy contraptions that have come up in the past. And mm-hmm. I'm sure one of them was the Nintendo with the VHS or maybe it was a, a an N64 with the VHS or something like something, something like that. Something like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. So um, good deal. So if that's the case, then if that's your number four, I'm going to tack onto that because mm-hmm. I think that uh, this kind of goes into the same play uh, as far as your multimedia sense, which is uh, my number three would be uh, backwards compatibility. So backwards compatibility is something that a lot of people, again, take it for granted, but some people don't. I mean, like, so PS4, uh, Sony was very bold into not doing the backwards compatibility. Nothing. Yeah. yeah, But Xbox was like, hey, man, you can play all of our 360 games. You can play our original Xbox games, all that stuff. And what I found very, very interesting was that, you know, during the PS3 era, when it first started, you know, you had PS4 ps1 ps2 and ps3 right Mm -hmm. you can totally you know sell that to your parents or yourself and saying you know what i don't need to play i don't need to have my ps1 anymore i don't need to have my ps2 anymore but i can still keep my media and i can still play all these games without you know without issue right so i think a lot of that is really uh interesting in the sense that you know now uh, PS5 got, a, you know, Sony got a little backlash, right, from last year or from last gen saying, hey, you know, Xbox can do all this stuff. Now, yeah. look what the PS5 can do. We can play all PS4 games. whoop de do Besides like nine, right? <laughs> yeah, besides like like nine really <laughs> silly, you know, silly games. Obscure I mean, games, yeah. Yeah, you know, people are like, oh, man, dude, I can't play this version of Knack. <laughs> you know, like, cares, man. Um, but yeah, I, I think backwards compatibility really, uh, you know, kind of crosses in with the whole multimedia thing with being a cd player dvd player i remember telling uh, you know telling myself like hey you know i don't have a dvd player but if i got my ps2 right dvd player no problem you know so i mean same thing with backwards compatibility it's like man dude like i don't want to get rid of my ps2 or i don't want to sell it to gamestop but that also means that i can still play my you know my my uh, ps2 games on my ps3 without any issue now granted do i do it now like do i play my ps4 games on my ps5 maybe one like you know or two but the fact that it's there is totally something i'm like yay all right fantastic um you know i think sony needs to you know uh step their game up to be honest with Mm -hmm. you in in terms of backwards compatibility but i think ps4 is a good start so yeah so when uh back in the day when i first got my ps2 Mm the first the first game i played on it was actually legend of dragoon uh, the reason this was the first game I played on it was because um, I visited my relatives and my aunt's employee was like, "Hey, do you want games on your PS1? I can get you a lot of games." Sure, he said, "Bring it, bring it along when you when you fly up." Um, so he modded it and he gave me a bunch of games, which was really mm-hmm. awesome. Um, and then I, I got Legend of Dragoon, which is one of my favorite underrated RPGs. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sony, you know, it's a first, it's a Sony game, and they right. they sent me a nice message. Your PlayStation is modded. Please call us to play this game. So I called them, and they're like, "Yeah, you can't play that with a mod." With a mod, I, like, I can't so believe I you called them. <laughs> I was like, I was like ten years old. I was like, "How do I play?" Like, oh, you have to unmod your PS One. And I was like, "So obviously never happened." Yeah. So but the first game I booted up on my PS Two was Legend of Dragoon. Wow. It was a great game. Um, and I, I think backwards compatibility also helps because, let's be honest, most launches aren't awesome there's maybe one really good game right and then like two or three uh games yeah so it gives you something to do because usually there's some sort of upscaling right i think the ps2 for ps1 had faster load time or something like yeah. that yeah, yeah there's some sort of benefit mm-hmm. so i think it does buffer you a little bit yeah and to your point it's like i don't have to keep my console around i can, I can actually I, I put it away or sell it or give it to a, a, a relative right and still play the games if, if i you know the one percent chance that i actually choose to yeah, I mean, I sold I sold my uh, PS4 Pro just recently, and 
I don't know, man. I mean, like, I'm kind of like mixed feelings about it. Like, typically, <laughs> every every console launch, I usually sell the console prior to to GameStop, so that way I can get like their promo deal, which makes me feel better. But then now that I sold it to somebody, I'm just kind of like. And then you know, of course, what did the guys say when I asked them? Like, yeah, so what are you gonna play when you uh, when when you when you bring, you know, boot up this PS4? Oh man, I, you know, I've been reading to play Kingdom Hearts three, and I swear I did not have the heart to tell them. Like, man, you're in for a world of hurt, man. Like, well, it's like man. the PS4 has. There's like we a, did a whole pod on that, right? We even did a whole the whole episode on that. Like, the library is so good, and you're gonna choose like Kingdom the, Hearts three. Well, Kingdom okay. Hearts three. I mean, I guess so. You, I mean, you do really you. that deep into the story. I mean, <laughs> if you can explain the story to me in five minutes, I will. I will give you money. <laughs> like, right. Explain to me in a way where I'll be like, oh, that's what it means. Dude, they got YouTube videos there like 30, 45 minutes explaining the story. Like, if you have to explain the story in 30 to 45 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes of my life to tell me a story about how simple it could be. No, that's not. I that's watched not. that video before, like the night I was going to pick up Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah. And I legit fell asleep. I, no, not, no lie. It was like maybe four o'clock. I was winding down my work. I was working from home. And I was going to go that night to pick up Kingdom Hearts 3. And I was like, I should watch this video so I, I know the story because I didn't play anything after Kingdom Hearts 2. Right. I fell asleep. Yeah. I'm telling you, man. It's, it's garbage. Absolute garbage. Sorry. If you listen to this podcast, I'm sorry, man. Like, I'll just tell you that right now. I'm, I'm sorry to sorry to bash on your parade there. But Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 were excellent. Excellent. Let's, let's end three, it there. <laughs> yeah. Everything else is just like, eh, whatever. So uh, number three, Joel, <laughs> we're doing diverse. Let's, let's continue with this uh, innovative uh podcast for tonight I, I i like that even though we didn't compare lists our, our lists are kind of contrasting yeah uh my number three are the dual joystick controllers oh ah, so, so playing off of, of of dual analogs playing off of riddell's um analog um innovation that really revolutionized you know control of the character mm-hmm. um to me the dual analog all of a sudden, it, it created genres. It it, it imported genres that mm-hmm. were previously only PC. Yes. Um. So so you guys kind of get where I'm going here. Uh, mainly third and first person shooting games. Yes. Um. So I, I know there was GoldenEye and you use the C buttons, but okay. eh. Um. There was Medal of Honor for PS One, and again you use the face buttons to aim. Eh. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. All of a sudden, you know, you have sensitivity to aim, which is almost. I would say argue more important than movement in a shooting game. Right. Um, so yeah, it there would be no Call of Duty that as we know today without the dual controller. Mm-hmm. And not only shooting games, right? Platformers, all of a sudden the camera wasn't static. Oh god. Or all of a sudden you don't have to use R2 L2 or um the triggers or to, or, or C buttons on Super or C Mario buttons. Or, right. To yeah, to move your camera. Two. Jerk. Um <laughs> what, one of the things that really shows me how like how impactful the, the dual analog controller is. Mm-hmm. Give a non gamer uh, a controller and ha- give them a platforming game and see how clunky they are trying to move and move the camera. Mm. But for a gamer, it's muscle memory, right? It's like, oh, I'm going to look forward. I'm going to go around this corner and I'm going to turn the camera while I go around the corner so I can see, I can see right. forward. Right. And for us, it's like, it's muscle memory. But for a non gamer, it's like, oh, oh, oh you yeah. know, what, what am I doing? So it's like, it's ingrained in our, in, in our, ourselves. It's, I, I tried using um, the PS1 mini with the PlayStation controllers. I tried to play Metal Gear Solid the other like a few oh, months ago. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I have to move to aim differently. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I have to actually turn my body to aim differently. Yep. All right. That was real fun. I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> I, I always wondered, man, with that PS1 mini, dude. It had so much potential. All they had to do was put some dual analogs in there, put some better emulation on that bad boy, and it could have been one of the best mini consoles. I, I, I swear, like a Sony intern developed the UI, <laughs> right? It, they they couldn't have paid that person more than you know intern salary to to design that. Yeah, dude, it is absolutely garbage, man. And I wish I wish it would have been something else because I'm a huge fan of those mini ca- retro classics. Just because, of course, you know it's me. And like, you know, the Super Nintendo, the Nintendo, man, so good. Even the Genesis, man. I mean, I love the Genesis one too. Even though I don't play it nearly as much as my as the other consoles, but man, they're so good. Um, Neo Geo, yeah, you know, it's Damn. all right. But yeah. I mean, you know, you, like I said, it's arc. That's an arcade thing. That's my that's my era. It's my that's my uh, that's my show. Um, but yeah, so okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna tack on to your number three now <laughs> because I'm gonna go with my number two, and I'm gonna tell you this right now. I mean, some people are gonna think it's gonna be crazy, but I will say that uh, you know, on the topic of controllers as being gaming innovations, I gotta say 
one of the things that I thought was the coolest innovation, and even though it's not the newest innovation, it was definitely something that was like, holy crap, they did it well. Nintendo's Wiimote, man. Gotta say. It's an ugly, ugly, ugly piece of equipment. But damn, you know, but damn if you don't play Wii Sports and get into that thing, man. Let me tell you. Right. Did, Number, yeah. You know, but PS Sony has something called Six Axis, right? It was just as good. No, no I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like, absolutely not. Have you played Warhawk with Six Axis? It's absolute garbage. Um, my number two was the Wii, is the Wii Mote, right? So Wii Mote slash motion controls. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, like I mentioned, playing Wii Sports on there wasn't the graph. It wasn't the most graphical intense game in the world. It didn't look that great, and there's five games on there. But like I said, man, you get you get four or five homies in the party back in the day when it came out, and you play boxing, and you just—I mean, all you're doing is just doing this, right? Right, 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 right. But how cool is that, man? I mean, like it was the first time you actually got to be, you know, supposedly in the game, right? Or like you're, you know, doing the tennis, you know, tennis racket. I mean, Joe Coy did a whole joke on it with his mom, and like, oh, you know, look mm-hmm. at me, and not, I'm going to throw the bat, you know, the you know, the bowling ball, and all this. It's an amazing, you know, in, innovative technology that again wasn't it's it's not like it's brand new right i mean they've got the servos and you know gyros and all that stuff but it was just so cool to be like be able to have this little one thing and be like wow i can actually move this thing and um i played what was it uh zelda twilight princess on on it which i thought was pretty cool but i mm-hmm. think the game that really got me when i was playing it which believe it or not I actually was able to play and beat without getting dizzy was uh metroid prime 3 good Good choice. Yeah, it was a great choice, man. One of the best, no, one of the best ones. But yeah, so mm-hmm. uh, motion controls, man. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, were you a big Wii person like when you know when it came out? I, I actually played like more games than just Wii Sports. So yeah, I, I, I was a fan. Um, I played the Smash. I can't remember which one it was. With the Wii um, mode? <laughs> oh no, the system. I'm talking oh, about the, the Wii system, yeah. <laughs> like, no more heroes. So it was actually pretty fun. Oh yeah. Also played yeah. Twilight Princess. Mm. Um, but to to me, that the power of of the Wii mode, right? How many families do you know that are not really gamers that mm. had a Wii and only Wii Sports? A ton. A ton. My my at the time girlfriend in college, her family bought a, a, a Wii, mm-hmm. and the only game they ever had was Wii Sports. Yeah. And they had a ball with it. They they brought it on vacations. They they played tennis in the in the hotel room. They they loved wow. it. Um, I th- I think I, I correction. I think I may have got her Mario Party like way down the line. Yeah, but she she played it for like a year with just Wii Sports. That's insane, man. For one one for console, one game. one game, and not only is that one game, it's a damn tech demo. Tech, right. it's a pack in game. There's what three innings I think in baseball and <laughs> <laughs> something like that. I don't. I mean, and then of course. What game did that did never got any play? Golf. <laughs> right. That game well, it was tough. It was, it was tough. It was, pretty man. Hard, yeah. you know, it was it was tough. I mean, you know, it's it's no uh, it's no everybody everybody's golf. You know, it's no, it's no hot it's, shots, right? It's no, no hot, hot shots, shots, baby. You know. You actually hit the uh, putt. I mean, come on. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like I just thought that, you know, it was such a cool thing to have. And I remember uh launch night, uh I waited out at Target down south in the hood. And uh, I literally camped. Mm-hmm. I camped out. I, I that was my own. I think it was one of my only campouts I ever done was for that damn Wii. Is that National City Target? No, or National City Boulevard Target. No, it was. Um, it was. Uh, oh gosh. Um, uh, Chilla Vista Target on Eighth Street, closest to uh, okay. Imperial. It was. Mm-hmm. You know, for guys, for you guys that don't know, you know, it's like the further south you go, the more you hit Mexico during San Diego and. I was pretty close over there when I was uh, when I was doing that, and I was I slept on a um, on a lawn chair, and I was with a, you know a, a buddy of mine, and we were about I think we were about a hundred people in, and I think mm-hmm. we were you know we were like maybe in the middle, but we got in, we got ours, I got out, and the first thing I said out loud to everybody was like, and I think I forgot how much it was, but I think it was like three hundred. I don't remember. I don't but, think it was uh, that expensive. It was a little cheap, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I was saying like, oh, you know, like I got, you know, I got the Wii, you know, five hundred bucks. I just yelled it out loud, you know, and because mm-hmm. I was delirious at that point, because I was like dead tired. Um, but yeah, and then as soon as I got home, I went to sleep. I said, actually, no, I set it up and I fell asleep. <laughs> I didn't. I actually didn't get a Wii until they started including the the bumpers with it. Oh really? I, I, I didn't get it at launch. It wasn't. Oh. 
I, I was I, I was too I'm cool a, for school. I'm a launch. Like... <laughs> I'm a I'm a launch. Uh, I'm a launch dude, man. I mean, like I've done every. I mean, I think. Let me think about this. I think my first launch was Dreamcast, 1999. But then PS2, so PS2, PS3, um, 360, maybe. Yeah, I've never I've never physically bought a launch console. Amazon, that's that's my launch console. Yeah. Day of, but day of, yeah. yeah. That's, that's, yeah. So, uh, we uh, that was that's my number two. Um, yeah. What 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 do you have, Joel? Are, are you gonna tack on to, to to this as well? Or I'm not. Sadly, okay. no. Damn. Um, <laughs> I, my number two actually tacks on a little bit to my number five with expandable storage. Mm. Uh, my number two is gonna be digital distribution. Mm. So. Mm-hmm. The, we all know the for the forefather of digital distribution is a little application called Steam. Uh, when what, when what, if, what, what, what is this Steam? Can, can you elaborate what the Steam it's is? This, it's this really vague application that no one really heard of. It's mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but it when when everyone first got it because they they wanted to play um Half Life. For me, it was it was CS one point six, kind of oh. mm-hmm. yeah, or Half Life if you if you um, were a Half Life person. But it was like. At first, I was like, "Oh, I, mean, I have to install this DRM. You know, I have to install this weird application. Right? Like, I don't want to do this." And but you installed it, you made an account, and then it was like, "Oh, cool! I don't have to play this anymore. I can just put the game up." Right? And then, oh, cool! All my games are in one spot because you know, if you're a PC gamer back in the day, it's desktop icons or yep. searching through the all programs, then putting yep. disc in. Mm-hmm. And then it was, "Oh, cool! These games are cheaper than retail." <laughs> and then it's, "Oh, they they have exclusive games that only come out on Steam." Right. And then of course you know Sony and Microsoft followed suit. Nintendo, their store still sucks, but <laughs> Sony and Microsoft followed suit. And what, what happened when when they went when they went this digital avenue is all of a sudden there's you know fifteen hundred stores online where you can just buy codes. Yep. Um, some are less reputable than others, I have to say. Yep. But you can buy codes. You're no longer tied to brick and mortar, right? I don't have to go to Walmart or Target to or Babbage's or GameStop to pick up my game. <laughs> if if I so choose, I can do preemptive download yep and midnight unlocks and i'm and i'm playing yep and true. you know no more play discs it obviously people do it because uh, both microsoft and sony just released disc driveless systems yes um, xbox did it last last gen as well but sony did it this gen uh the series s is seen as the biggest um the biggest kind of bang for your buck in this on in this generation and it doesn't have a disc drive that's true people are doing it people are going all in on digital only yep and without you know without steam it wouldn't have happened. Um, it it really was like, and h- how much money? Let me, let me ask you this, Rodell. Yes, sir. H- how much money would you say you've put into Steam games? You have you logged zero hours in. Ooh, man. Is it in the four digits? I think mine's in the four digits. No, definitely in the three digits, okay. uh, for sure. But to be fair, a lot of the games that I have that have zero uh, zero hours on are a lot of bundle games. To be fair, but. I will say that there have been a lot of games where I'm like, "Ooh, that's on sale! Great, click!" And then right. you're like, "Oh, cool, that's Dude, awesome!" Those, those Steam sales, man. I, I, yeah, I probably spent more money than hours played in actual <laughs> games from the Steam sales. Don't you? Don't aren't you? You're the one that told me uh, years ago where uh, you would uh, use VPN, go into a Steam sale in like India or Mexico or something like that, and get the game for like ridiculous cheap is it is it my am I, I i did that for for nba streaming i didn't know oh, it was that's a great idea though <laughs> but i i did it for legitimate streaming i would stream like i'm i would only pay like 15 bucks because i live in india i don't want to watch the nba <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> is this well, is dude a time warner has a has a monopoly Block. on lakers i, I know there's no time warner on youtube come on time warner I know, man. Come on, dude. Like, I don't want to watch no Clipper game. Come on, guys. Come on. Anyway, uh, so uh, digital distribution. I wasn't uh, keen on the Steam thing until very late in the game. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I've had a Steam account for years, but I never really got into it because I was never a PC gamer. But dang, dude, I will tell you, you are absolutely right. There's so many different avenues where you see these games that are going for like a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars. You're like, oh, and that's you, cool. You, you may or may not be, you know, getting stolen material but you're not stealing it you're buying it you're buying it 
Yep, you're buying I'm, it. Yep. I'm not. I don't care if it's stolen or not, man. I mean, like you know, I got a I got a brand new pair of Bose headphones from somebody <laughs> for 150 on Facebook Marketplace. Are they stolen? I don't know, <laughs> but they're but they're brand. You new. paid for them. You I paid, paid for them, them, and you know what? It's all good. I got warranty on and everything. Please don't listen to this, Bose. And so <laughs> it's uh, this is one of those things where I'm just like, I I don't really, you know, I don't uh. I'm okay with that. You know, I'll, I'll pay the, you know, the, the lesser amount. Granted, this goes into the whole, uh, you know, emulation thing where like, I won't pay for anything, but then I won't play the game. So it's like, I pay, if I paid $2 for this game, like I'm not really feeling it. But then if I paid $60 sure. for a game, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to play that game like to the heart's content or I want to try to beat it as much as I can. So the last point I have on digital distribution was that I don't think indie indie studios exist without it. Ooh, they, yeah. they cannot pay to have you know if you're only releasing a 20 dollar game mm-hmm. are you really gonna have distributors with target and gamestop and make a physical disc to sell yes. your 20 dollar game you're not gonna do that yeah um you're you're, you're eating your profits yeah um absolutely. I, i'm just waiting for the time and I, I don't know i'm sure someone will leave a really intelligent comment and let us know <laughs> i'm waiting for the time where digital games will at release be cheaper than than physical games Ooh. it only makes sense right you're yeah. you're not paying for media yep even if it's only five or ten dollars, yep. I'm, I'm, you're, it costs you less to give me the game digitally, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's agreements. You know, I'm sure Walmart's like, hell no, Sony, you're not doing that, or we're not stocking your game, right? But, uh, but we'll see. Yeah, no, that's absolutely, man. The day that happens, man, is the day I'll go all digital. But until then, I always thought it was funny though. A uh, quick, super funny note, or not super funny, but uh, the Xbox uh, One S all digital edition if you look at it in acronyms it's xbox sad <laughs> <laughs> dad joke uh all right so uh we're we're getting there so we're getting down to number one here but uh, of course before we get to that we need to go through our um uh honorable mentions do you have any honorable mentions for uh these innovations i have three um my first one, you, it was your number five memory cards. Okay. Yeah. I also have uh, some controller based innovations, haptic feedback. Oh, if, yeah. For those who are poor, don't know it. Vibrations. <laughs> <laughs> good vibrations. <laughs> and uh, wireless controllers, good ones. Not, oh, the, yeah. not, not the Mad Cats ones that have like a two foot, two foot range. Two foot range. Oh, man, dude. I had those. I remember my brother bought me a pair of uh, wireless controllers for Nintendo. Man, we thought they were so cool until we realized that we couldn't really use where they line of sight so if anything yeah they were line of sight it was like huge big infrared <laughs> thing that was like that big it was a huge puck and then yeah, like <laughs> you have to play like down <laughs> this is awesome yeah i'm like oh my god it was so bad but i mean you know god bless them for buying those i remember that but man i just remember that was crazy um so a uh, couple of uh honorable mentions for me uh one of them was uh disc space media so you know, going from um, cartridge to disc, going from cartridge to, to <laughs> disc. So I mean, obviously the cost went a lot down afterwards after the whole chip shortage and blah blah blah. But um, it's kind of cool because I mean, if you think about it, you know, you have 650 megs on on a you know on a CD, right? That you can you know put all that stuff on there versus what a cartridge, which I don't even remember how much you know whatever the cartridge base was. Another but, gaming historian plug. Yes, that, this actually upped the quality of gaming music across the board. Yes. All of a sudden, you had space for good music, yep. which is why a lot of people considered those um, those PS One Final Fantasy to have some of the best OSTs of all time. Mm, yeah, it's true because it's super clean. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention too, uh, which is just a personal favorite of mine, I don't think it's truly innovative, but it's definitely something I thought was just really cool. Uh, Cell shaded graphics. <laughs> I, I so we before we started i talked about stuff that i took out yeah i had i had stuff in here i was like oh voice acting is gonna be in there <laughs> and uh 4k and high refresh rates i had all yeah. these ideas and i was like are these really gaming innovations these are more techno like i pulled a lot from animation right from movie right. animation mm-hmm. um what's the thing where they put all the, all the phone balls on you and you and you move and you make oh, mo-cap. movements yeah so motion capture i was like yeah. those were all on my list but i was like this isn't really a gaming innovation so i took it out yeah i, I just thought cell shaded graphics were really cool like one of my favorite cell shaded games of all time is jet set radio like i just thought mm-hmm. it was just the the artwork and the way it was presented was just so cool i mean i don't know it just i just thought it was really cool I the, the neat thing about cell shading it's, it's to me it's similar to like kind of the um the six eight sixteen bit style that people do now yeah it's timeless it, it never if you look at ps1 that's damn that's rough the yeah. graphics are rough, but a cell shaded game from like GameCube, like um, 
What was it? Uh, beautiful Joe. That, like that beautiful was, Joe. Yeah. It, no, we'll never go out of style. Yeah. I thought Beautiful Joe was done very beautifully. That um, Capcom also did uh, uh, Automatalista, the racing mm-hmm. game. That was mm-hmm. the cel shading that was great on there. I love arcade racers. Um, but um, yeah, I think that was definitely something that I was going to put on there. But I'm like, eh, it's, it's not, it's just more of a me being like, oh, this is super cool. It's, a, it's, a, it's an art preference, right? It is a, definitely an art yeah. preference for sure. Uh, if, I, if, I had, if I had my choice, it's, it's either cell shaded or 16 bit uh, era graphics for sure, just because I'm an old fogey. Um, all right. So, number one, uh, I think this is kind of going to be a little bit of a, a grand scheme of things, but one of the biggest uh, innovations in gaming in my opinion, uh, was on the go. Now, granted, I am not a big handheld gamer by any means, but handheld consoles, I feel, are like one of the biggest like pivotal uh, movements in gaming history, right? Uh, when the Game Boy was put out, or even Game & Watch, right? Game & Watch, uh, Game Boy... Uh, you know the tiger even the tiger handhelds i'm not even just talking about major major game systems here i'm talking about handheld gaming as a whole being able to unplug from your tv being able to go on a screen and go out in the world like you know how many drives that i was saved by you know handheld gaming or you know or waiting at the waiting at the damn dentist room or whatever. I mean, I, I'm sorry, I'm not a I'm not a toy kid or like I didn't really have much of an imagination. You know, it was just kind of like I want my you, video game. You, know? you didn't bring a book with you. I didn't, bring, <laughs> I didn't bring a strategy guide with me. I just had my had my game system and I was able to play. You know, whatever game I had at the time, like Tetris or, uh, you know, what was it a. Uh, uh, Final Fantasy Legend, you know, just a lot of the different handheld games for Game Boy. Oh, but you, you played know. Final Fantasy Legend. I didn't think anyone else did. No, I did. Yeah, I had Final Fantasy. Le- I okay, sorry. I, I'm I'm putting in, I'm butting into your number one. But no, no, my, no, 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 no. One no. one Christmas, my uh, my aunt, she was like the same aunt who actually got my PS One modded. Mm. She was like, "What what do you want for Christmas?" Because we we're going to visit them, but they don't live in um in this country. And I was like, "I want a Final Fantasy Legends game because I saw it in a magazine." Mm. And then I found out later from my cousin that she spent months looking for this game because <gasps> they, they it was way past when they actually came out. Yeah, she found a random copy of Final Fantasy Legends Three at a garage sale. Wow! And I when I went to visit them, and she had it for me, and it was awesome. Oh, the first technically the first Final Fantasy I played, I think. I don't think I had a PS One yet, so I think it was the first Final Fantasy I played. It was hard. I died like right away. But oh it was yeah. Cool. It was cool. No, it was definitely cool. It was hard, but yeah, it was good. And good, good on you, Dita. Good on you, dude. Yeah, because it wasn't in stores because it was like way, you know, yeah, was, way later. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I mean, it, like I said, like at the time, that was like you know, Game Boy, Game Boy back in the mm-hmm. day, like two bit green, right. green screen. I think at your time they had the, the it was Game Boy Color by then. I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, I didn't have one, but my her presence on my sister, and to be fair, she's her godmother was a Game Boy Color. Oh, well, I well I sullied in my uh, my peasant Game Boy pocket. Okay, may, may I ask this question then? I, mean, sure. I know we're gonna do this in the pocket. Is this 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 isn't the same auntie that uh, that brought the dead animal across the states, right? That is the same auntie. No, oh! <laughs> she was a nun. She's very cool. Okay, <laughs> good on you, Tita. Uh, anyway, uh, handheld consoles. I think it was definitely something you know that's in a, you know, it was gaming innovation. Mm-hmm. It's still relevant to this day. You wouldn't have a switch. You wouldn't have any of these different types of gaming, you know, outside of just sitting in your house. You know, it got you wouldn't have outside. games on your phone without. Yes, mobile gaming. absolutely. hundred percent. So um, that's my number I, one. H- half the Japanese, you know, population would, would die of boredom on trains without oh, mobile Jesus, gaming. Man. And I've been on those Japanese trains, boy. And let me tell you, man, like those guys love their handhelds, man, whether it be a switch or mm-hmm. uh, a phone or whatever because man you just go to town and it's super quiet in there that's one thing that you guys don't realize if you guys never been to japan and you guys go on a train you would think it's like loud as hell or like you think it's like going all crazy or whatever mm-hmm. this is the, the quietest train mind your own business man mind your own business dude like me me and my buddy we were just looking at each other we, we weren't even talking we we're just looking at each other just like mm-hmm <laughs> or like it'd be like a like a really uh you know really good looking girl or whatever like that yeah i just i just look at my buddy and go like <laughs> <laughs> oh man all right close us off joel what you got for number one have i told you lately i love these lists because it really 
I, I think it takes two really good points of view, right? It, right. So, um, my my number one was not mobile gaming, but it's something very very similar, and, and it shows our gap in um, gaming generations. Mm. My number one is online multiplayer. Wow, I didn't even think about that one. Damn. <laughs> and, and, but I think it. Sh- I think it, it. It is indicative of our gap, right? Right. Totally. So for me, this changed the game. It. It no undoubted. Undoubtedly, it. It kind of created markets where it made. Um. You know the soul and fun sucking MMOs. Fun sucking yes. MMOs. Yes. Um, World of Warcraft, I think, is the most played game of all time. Something like that. It also killed Fortnite. off. You know, arcades to a degree. Not no, maybe no, not it killed, in, no, it killed it off. Yeah, I, I'm not definitely I'm not in America. In America, definitely it's, America, it's, it's yeah, gone. Sure. Yeah. Um, it, it, yeah, it created numerous genres. I know people. Um, I know, uh, for instance, Megan, who was our, our guest host a few episodes ago. Mm-hmm. She she pauses if a game doesn't have any online com- com- capability. She'll she think about before oh. she buys the game. Uh, she'll be like, "Oh no, no online ability." Like she's one of those people. Man. Yeah, well, because she to her that's that's the replayability right? right if i'm playing um she's playing ghost of Tsushima right now right if i'm playing that and then i hear legends comes out oh cool that's under 10 hours i get to i get to get for free right it adds a layer of, of replayability and you know more bang for your buck true um obviously the biggest games out you know the past five years all your Fortnites, your your apex legends your overwatches your call yep. of duties yep don't exist without, without online multiplayer it 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 built the first person shooting genre. Oh sure, on, online multiplayer. Absolutely. It, I mean, yeah, like, it's yeah. You had it's, uh, every. Go ahead, man. No, no, I'm sorry. Uh, it, you had uh, you know all these like land parties and stuff, but nothing. I love the yeah, land parties, man. Yeah. I'm sad they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, your land party was my arcade, so just just mm-hmm. keep that in mind. But no, but I mean, yeah, you had land parties with Counter Strike parties and whatnot. But then once you got that online boy, like you got that cable modem and it was readily available. You got Discord on. You got some headphones. Now you got Zoom if you want to do Zoom. Yep. And you guys are you guys are online partying. It's just yep. you know through the monitor. Through the monitor, man. And uh, again, this this goes back to you know our children never being able to realize how much of uh, convenience that it, it is now versus before. Where you know I can just imagine my you know my son or your son mm-hmm. being like you know like, you have to go to a place to actually play games like and what pay. Is that? <laughs> And pay a quarter? What? what Not only that? that, man. Think so. We're we're both um, children of military parents. Yes. And when 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 my father was on Westpac, I d- literally didn't see him for six months. Right. Not even virtually. Yeah. Now it's like, oh, I, I went on a business trip last year, and I and I zoom or I Facetime with my kid. Yeah. It's, Absolutely. You know, it's it's a thing of the past where where you just don't see someone. Yeah. Unless they're like you know. CIA or something, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, that, that's gone. You know, the yeah. internet's here. Internet's here, man, and multiplayer is here to stay. And uh, like I said, I'm definitely uh, a a product of multiplayer games. I know Joel's a very single player, like just kind of. That's why I, I preface my list with these aren't even like things I personally do, right? But it most definitely impacted the gaming industry. Absolutely, man. I think yeah, that that's a great great point. Great number one, man. You beat me on that um what'd you guys think uh did you guys think we missed anything on this list leave a comment down below uh if you guys have any you know uh things that you thought that we missed out on please do uh something might come for you if uh if you might leave a comment down below so you may uh you know want to do that uh if you guys haven't yet go ahead and follow us now on social media uh twitter instagram tiktok uh, at what's your underscore five if you want to reach out to us for any topics or if you guys want to uh, join us on the show uh, topics at what's your five.com and uh, with the past couple of episodes I'm going to go ahead again and uh, end this off with a video game question so let's grab the cards here and see what we get for, for the podcast listeners that was my hands rubbing together don't uh, <laughs> don't misconstrue that we're Again, we're we're family friendly. We're all family friendly here, except for when we're describing the N sixty four controller. So, all right, here we go. Here's our here's our question of the of the end of the podcast here. So let's see here. Oh, all right. Introduced in Mario Kart sixty four and a staple of the series since, which controversial projectile targets uh, targets the race leader? 
Let me know on, in the guys. comments below. And come also, on, again, guys. I'm just saying <laughs> we don't have to answer it now. I want the people down below to answer it. Uh, if you haven't already, click the like button. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, please. Um, again, I thank you guys very much. Joel and I appreciate you. Anthony appreciates you. And he's been doing a killer job with all the production stuff. So I'm super duper stoked to still have him around. Um, again, uh, thank you guys very much. My name is Rodell. That's Joel. And we're out. Peace out, guys. See you guys.